afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Mary Zahn. I am here to represent the 19 Belmas cousins, many of whom could not have could could not be here today. I am number eight and referred to by Uncle Carl as in thy beautiful <laughs> because on the last day of his life on earth. He suddenly forgot my name. <laughs> Don't worry, Uncle. I do forgive you. Uncle Carling was a family man long before he had a family of his own. It isn't written in his obituary, but he had sisters, all of whom he did not grow up with. He did, however, grow up as the youngest of five brothers. Uncle Ernie, the oldest, the eldest, became the patriarch of the family when their father passed away in 1970. He was the quiet uncle. Uncle Malone was the next oldest. He was a man of less words, but when he spoke, he was deliberate. Then there was my dad, Caesar. My dad was the uncle who was a rebel amongst his brothers. Uncle Carlin even said to me, of all my brothers, your dad was the one that I was scared of the most. <laughs> Uncle the Kid, who is thankfully present here today, a Purple Heart veteran and loyal to his family, he is the great storyteller. Finally, Uncle Carlin. Uncle Carlin was the cool, laid back kind of uncle being the youngest of his brothers made him the closest in age to his nieces and nephews. It was easy for him to have a close relationship with us, having been able to relate to our young and naive issues, even encouraging us to have boyfriends. <laughs> Uncle Carling was always young at heart. He left Guam in the 70s to join the army, but every time he came back, he always made time to play with us. We recalled some of the fond memories we had of him, like playing hide and seek in the dark after Pipe, Typhoon Pamela struck Guam and left us without power. He would use his battle training as first infantry to crawl and maneuver his way on the ground to try and get us. As we got older, he would as he got older, he would drive us to the bowling alley for a family bowling night. One day, when he had returned home to Guam for a visit, he went, we went bowling as we usually do. This time, he challenged us to make the match more interesting. He said, the losing team has to sing in front of everyone. And since then, it had become a Belmont family tradition. We promise, Uncle, that we will continue to keep that tradition alive for our children. Uncle Carlin made our childhood fun and exciting. He seemed to know how to entertain us. We always looked forward to his visits between tours and his school. Uncle Carlin was an uncle of many life lessons. He taught some of us the hard lessons of smoking. He helped Meg light up her first cigarette. Yes, that is correct. To Meg, he was the cool uncle that allowed these vices and was willing to keep it a secret. But to him, it was reverse psychology. The experience for her was so unpleasant that she never thought to pick up another cigarette again. He taught Ernie how to fly. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Carly was playing around, carrying Ernie one time when she was about two or three. She enjoyed being tossed around in the air and getting caught. I mean, it was a common thing to play back in the old days. But on that last toss, his aim was an overshot, and probably higher than he should have. Still, Ernie went airborne, high over, and came down towards his back. He meant to catch her, but she fell behind him. Okay, so that wasn't a lesson. That was a lesson that did not go very well. Thankfully, she was fine. But Uncle was so scared of Mama Mercy. <laughs> For
for us cousins? For us cousins, he was the uncle that left us behind. Yet somehow, when he left the island, he took a piece of us with him. We traveled in his heart and his thoughts every time he was in a hole in the front line. He shared with Robert many times that was what kept him going, his nieces and his nephews. He traveled, we traveled with him to every duty station he was assigned. He kept a not very flattering picture of Marge, Lynn, Anne, and myself in his wallet since we had given it to him in the 1980s. And he showed it to us so many years ago, and he said that he had had it with him everywhere that he went. Even in his final days, it remained in his wallet with him. We had no doubt that we were loved by our beloved uncle. And I can stand here and speak with an honest heart today to tell him, as you as my witness, that we all loved him so much. Over the years, his role expanded. Uncle was the babysitter for some of us, a friend for others, and more recent, a father figure when our dads passed. He was supportive and kind and just simply amazing. He was someone who we can proudly call our uncle. I remember many years ago, we were sitting around with uncle talking about the land but the thing that I remembered most about the conversation, the one that resonated with me, was the message that he wanted all of us to live by. He said, Indai, do not let anything get between you and your cousin. Nothing is worth getting in the middle of our family. Do not carry the burden of our generation. And that moment changed my perspective forever because he was right. Nothing was more important than to keeping our family together. We can learn from the lessons our fathers taught us. They worked hard to stay in touch, to live close together so that we can grow up together. Our fathers taught us that there is no such thing as an extended family because family is family is family. Despite our differences, and the sibling rivalry that they had, they remained close to each other. They raised us to treat each other as brothers and sisters. So when Uncle Carling and Auntie Gingi had Charles, Kathleen, and Kimberly outside of our island, they did not realize that they had gained 16 other siblings. If anything Uncle Carling has taught us, it is that we are much stronger together. To our cool, loving, and witty uncle, rest in eternal peace. Look down from heaven with my dad and the rest of your heavenly brothers to watch over us. Don't worry about us. We will take care of each other and honor your memory forever. Peace. <laughs>